Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium tonight to bring you a special little wildlife find. This is a Scolopendra polymorpha, which was a tiger centipede, the first little centipede that I found in the wild this spring. Now this guy has uh, minor damage to him, as animals often do in the wild, but still a very cute specimen that I wanted to share with you guys. Let's take a look. Taking a look at this animal, they do like to burrow and they are kind of crazy. They are very fast. And this is an animal with a, um, I'd say medium potency of venom. I've been stung by these plenty of times and it definitely does not feel good. I think that the potency of the venom does vary from locale to locale because the person I know that got tagged by the one that we received from Oklahoma City complained a lot about the pain and he's even been tagged by rattlesnakes and things like that and Gila monsters and basically said that the bite from that centipede was far more painful and from what I witnessed it was true because he kind of acted like a big baby but in other news, a bite from the centipede is not of medical significance to a human. Their venom is intended to kill very small prey. And so it's going to hurt, but it's really no big deal. You can put ice on it if you want. I would keep the bite clean, but it's honestly nothing to worry about. Just stomp around for a minute and go, ow, oh, that hurt, and then be done with it. This is an animal that I handle on occasion, but not all the time. They don't particularly enjoy being handled. Oh, you can see this one is missing a segment on its back here. Not a segment. My apologies. Um, see how it has this modified leg on the back? Normally there's a pair of those sticking out. And this one is missing one, which obviously does not impede it. It's more of a, they just use it to hold on to stuff when they climb, which this one being in captivity now is not going to be fighting for its life or crawling away from predators. So luckily this guy is now in safe hands and all of those little legs do actually regenerate when they molt. Adults molt about once a year and the younger ones molt as they grow uh, about every month or two. This one's in a juvenile stage, so it might molt, I don't know, in six months or so. It looks pretty fresh right now. Not like it's freshly molted, but uh, it, it looks like it molted not too long ago. This was a Scolopendra polymorpha, tiger centipede. It's called that due to the striping on its body. Here is another wild caught specimen. This is an animal called Hemiscolopendra marginata, also known as the Florida blue. And you can see, hope you can see, it has a bluish gray color to it. And as you can see, they have a bluish gray color to them. This one is nice. I think they're cute, medium temperament, a little bit wackadoo, kind of like most centipedes that you would encounter. And they just have kind of a uniform color. Their heads are a little bit brighter, kind of orangey. But unlike the two species of centipedes that we have in the American Southwest, this one is um, more of a muted color. I think they're still really neat though. This one also came from Florida. This is known as the Scolopendro longipes or Florida Keys Giant, although I suspect it originated in Haiti, but I'll be honest with you, I don't know tons about this animal. So if you do know more about it that you'd like to educate us on, you can definitely comment it below or email me at deadlytarantulagirl at yahoo.com. And uh, I like this one. From what I know, it's the second largest U.S. built behind the Scolopendra Heros, uh, possibly Castaniceps, which luckily for me live here. And that's awesome because 
people find them horrifying and disgusting, which means they call me to come and get them, which is very exciting. This and the Florida Blue that you saw before this were actually sent to me by a fan in Florida, Steven Grossberg, as a thank you for making videos, which I thought was really cool. And so I really like these animals, uh, primarily because they were a gift from a fan and also because they're really cool and beautiful. Now let's take a look at another Southwest centipede. Yep, done that. Ready? Oh, look, he's eating, how cute. So this is the largest species in the US and this is definitely not as large as it will grow, although that's a nice little beastie centipede right there. And you can see he is very happily feeding. This one has all of its segments and legs and antenna intact, which is very exciting. This is the Scolopendra Haros Katsinoseps, also known as the giant red-headed centipede. And dang, check that out. He's just going to town. Maybe this is a little sadistic, but I enjoy watching these guys hunt and feed because they're such amazing predators. They're super duper fast. Each of their little legs have hooks on them. They can hang on very tightly and they do have venomous jaws with which to pump their prey full of venom. They kind of look like aliens and most people find them quite horrifying, but I think that they are beautiful and incredible. And I personally love keeping these animals in my collection. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing those beautiful centipedes. You'll have to tell me what you prefer, centipedes or millipedes. I think that they're all really lovely and I like them both. Here are a few of my favorite centipede books that I refer to for breeding and keeping. Uh, this one is by Carl Sandifer, who I regret that I did not get to meet the last time I was in Oklahoma City. I was told that he was buzzing around my booth, but I didn't actually get to talk to him. So next time you see me, Carl, come up and say hello, please. And then this one is by one of my favorite invert authors, Oren McMonagle. I have done some collecting for him, so I am in the uh, dedication or intro of some of his books. And I really like Oren's books. I highly recommend either of the authors. I will post Amazon links for both of these books below. These are the two best centipede books that I know of, but if you guys know of other good uh, peed literature, go ahead and post it in the comment box below so I can take a look at that. And if you are an author of invert books, I'd love to hear from you. Hope you guys like this one and I'll see you again very soon.